It might seem like a weird thing to say, but psychology hasn't always existed. Psychology was invented. Prior to the 19th century, nobody had heard of psychology because psychology didn't exist. So who was the genius who started it? Well, the world's first ever psychologist was a German scientist called Wilhelm Wundt. Wundt led the Leipzig laboratory in Germany and churned out hundreds of pieces of research, igniting the engine that grew into the huge discipline that we know today. At the time, Wundt was interested in psychophysiology. How does vision work? How about hearing? Physical senses in the mind. Some of Wundt's initial research questions continue to interest psychologists today, though our ability to measure and manipulate variables is significantly more sophisticated almost two centuries on. Germany's university system at the time of Wundt was already set up to favour a scientific approach, even in subjects that are typically considered to be the arts. So whilst other countries' academics were philosophising, Wundt was getting empirical. For Wundt, psychology was the science of immediate experience, and in order to measure this, he trained people to be self-observers. The approach was called structuralism. The technique was introspection, literally to look within oneself. And Wundt's introspectionists were required to observe stimuli and then describe their experiences. Against modern standards, Wundt's research is barely scientific, and there are countless examples of introspectionists not agreeing on exactly what they're observing, or lengthy delays between the initial experience and the subsequent recording of the experience. However, Wundt's research inspired the birth of a new discipline, so I think we ought not to be too harsh on his rookie errors. Psychology developed as a science through a series of phases, each rejecting something about the phase that came before it. Wundt's structuralism was superseded by functionalism, which really took root in America. Whereas structuralists were interested in the components of consciousness, what makes up our conscious mind, functionalists thought that the focus should be on the processes of the conscious mind. And so the study shifted to studying behaviours instead of the hidden mental components. Perhaps the most famous functionalist was William James, who said, My thinking is first, last, and always for the sake of my doing. Therefore, the theory followed, study what I do to understand what I think. Subsequent schools of psychology are wide-ranging, from evolutionary psychology to Freud's psychodynamic theory, and then onto behavioralism, led by such giants as John Watson and Ivan Pavlov. By the middle of the 20th century, psychology had taken a new change in direction in what is now called the cognitive revolution. Cognitive psychology returned psychology to the study of hidden mental processes rather than focusing on the behavioral expressions of these processes. And more recently yet, the biological revolution launched into force towards the end of the 20th century as our ability to observe the brain in action was liberated by huge developments in measuring tools such as brain scanners. So today, we find ourselves surrounded by all manner of different psychological specialisms, neuroscience, social psychology, environmental psychology, behavioural, cognitive, occupational psychology, gestalt psychology, psychodynamics, humanistic psychology. There are so many more. All of them have Wilhelm Wundt to thank. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, remember to subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and hit that notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.